Welcome to the AWS Report. I'm Jeff Barr. Today I'm speaking with Jason Wells of Log by Calls. Welcome. Hey, thanks a lot. So congratulations on winning the AWS Startup Challenge. Isn't that awesome? What was that all about? Oh, <laughs> it was about everything. You know, it's kind of like a, a life's journey culminating into one exciting moment. It's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's a bigger win than just the win. Mm -hmm. Being involved with such a great group of finalists, it was scary when you're going up to compete and you want their products. <laughs> it's like, oh, I want that and I want that. You think, how am I going to win against that because you really like them. Anyway, so you guys did a great job in terms of pulling in a lot of top talent in the, across the world. Tell me a bit about what Log My Calls does. Log My Calls, we listen to the conversations. We believe that there's gold in every conversation. There's, what, $70 billion spent right now in advertising, specifically to get the phone to ring. But right now, without analyzing or looking at those calls, there's very little data available. So what we do is, with a little bit of JavaScript code, we're allowing people to route their calls businesses to route calls coming to them through our servers. We record those, run those through natural language processing, so then we can pull out keywords, phrases, and triggers so you can automate those sales and marketing activities. So you're effectively injected into the call between, so I make a call, it goes through your servers, and then to the ultimate customer, and you're, you're capturing the, the voice along yeah, the way. Yeah, we're capturing the voice, we're recording that call, then we run, run that through our process and our algorithms, and then we're digging through that gold to say, all right, what's valuable? And you can preset the triggers to say, I want to look for a missed opportunity, or I want to see if I have an angry customer, or are they talking about my competitor, right? And all these things are questions. And when you think about the massive amount of calls that are coming through and we're getting no data out of that, it's, it's a gold mine. Does this happen in real time as the call is progressing or you process it after the fact? Right now we process it after the fact. It's near real time within the next, you know, within minutes after the call so that you can trigger an action. So for example, if somebody calls in and they're upset about an appointment, you want to be able to respond pretty quickly, right? Uh, and in today's market, the way people respond is when you start seeing the Twitters and your social media watch and you say, oh my, I got to do something about that. Well we're able to catch it before they even tell anyone to say, beep, hey, send out a trigger and alert to your CRM to, you know, this customer had a bad experience and it wasn't resolved very well, so let's take care of it. So you're, you've got the voice, you're, right. you're turning that into something digital, yeah. you're then assigning some semantics to it, and at some point you have to go from some generic level to something you can hand over to the customer. How, how far up that, that stack of meaning? We continue all the way until we hand over the, the, the information. So you can set up a trigger or an alert uh, in, out of any type of conversation you want. So we, we start with establishing what are the triggers, what are the indicators, and those indicators might be sales indicators, they might be marketing indicators or customer service indicators. Once you, so all the complicated analysis goes to that to where you say, Bing, light goes on for indicator. Then we create thresholds to say, well, if light goes on, then trigger my CRM or trigger an SMS to go out. And so that's what we do is we have a webhook technology. So we do an HTT post essentially to any web service so they can get this data in that anyone who uses any web service can get the data and they can pick out which piece. Oh, well, give me the name and the phone number so that I can call them back or go and do a data append and find the email address so I can respond to them that way. Sounds cool. It, Sounds really cool. It is, it is very cool. You know, a lot of times you, you, know, you, you talk about things that you do and they say, oh, that's not rocket science. This, this is rocket science. I mean, it's really cool stuff as we move into artificial intelligence and machine learning and, and having, uh, having it learn from these conversations and evolve to say, wow, company X, you need to start asking these questions based on the trends that we're hearing in these conversations. Okay, now how does AWS fit into this? So AWS is a huge component to almost everything we do because we push everything up into the cloud. So we have massive amounts of call recordings, of course, and then we access those. Those need to be you know, encrypted, they need to be secure, they need to be accessible. So we pump those up into the cloud and then move that over into cold storage as well for longer term storage. But all of our applications run in the cloud and we have you know, scalability. It's one of the things that I was very concerned about when I talked to our CTO is, look, we have clients that come on and they might bring on millions of calls like that. How are we going to handle that processing? What are we going to be doing? It's like, 
no, oh, look, this is easy. It just automatically create, just creates for you. new instances. It's like, it's not magic, right? No, no, Amazon's, it's not magic. <laughs> but, but really, you know, from, from our perspective, from the ability to scale that business is, ugh, I would hate to be driving around to all the server farms we would have to have if we didn't have AWS. All right, so um, do you actually keep all the, the voice forever, or is there some expiration period or time that you move it off to cold storage and then expire? So we keep it live and accessible immediately for uh, one year, and then we move it to cold storage where it's archived for another five to seven years. And so we, we keep it for quite a bit of time. Uh, a lot of that's for security purposes and just maintaining their other laws and requirements to, to hold recordings. And so we provide that option. And it, it, it's almost like, um, it, it, in many cases, we're democratizing the, these complex solutions and making it very simple for somebody to go and access all these things. Now, with all this archived data, would you anticipate that as your algorithms mature and get more sophisticated, you might actually go and reprocess old conversations to see if you can actually get additional value from them? Absolutely. There's, there's probably, you know, there's, there's a half a dozen, dozen ways. And when you start collecting data, and what we look at is this is data. Right now, we're very careful about uh, privacy information, and so how you use it, uh, we're, we're very careful about that. But but being able to analyze it and look at it in aggregate, and look at the trends, right? So we can go and then aggregate across industries and across verticals. But again, that data uh, we keep it uh, very confidential and very private. So it would be under you know certain conditions that we'd go back and, and look. But what we, at a minimum that we're doing is learning and taking that information to learn and improve on the algorithms to say, all right, are we, how much value can we pre be providing here and there? But where we're focused today is um, data, a lot of data and the value of data is perishable, right? So it, it's only interesting. If you have an angry customer, right? That's interesting for maybe a day, but if it's two days later, then yeah, you lost it, right? Too late. Or somebody who's calling in and price shopping, and they're asking about price, and you don't take care of them, and they hang up, you probably have 30 minutes, right? So this is perishable information that we really, you need to have the action triggers connected to it. So we aren't, while we are using big data from these calls, and actually creating it, our most important objective is to create actions. But actions on individual things, not Action. on not on not populations. On, not, not on population, not, not not on huge aggregate. Though again, those are those are things that we, we clearly sure. can look okay. into. So where do you see this going over the next six to twelve months? We're at a stage right now where uh, you know yeah, at first you get this, oh, this is kind of creepy, right? <laughs> and then it's like, wow, this is really cool. And so what, what, we've, what we found is that the adoption is picking up and that's just going to steamroll. We believe at some point in time that um, businesses will say, I don't wanna just look at my sales and marketing driven. I want every call recorded so that I can learn. Because when you think about it, if you're a large organization, uh, one of our clients is Tiger Kingdom, Big O Tires with 930 locations. Imagine all the conversations going on. If you want to know what your customer cares about, just listen to them. Sure. But it's impossible to listen to call recordings, right? But using a log my calls, you now have the, all the calls, millions of communications, of conversations with your customer that you can now take advantage of. I mean, that's cool stuff. Right? And that's, that's where we see it going. Excellent. All right, well, congratulations again for winning the Startup Challenge and wish you best of luck for the future. Thank you so much. I appreciate pleasure. it. This has been the AWS Report, and I'm Jeff Barr.